Okay, if you're thinking about getting a lob haircut, you're not gonna wanna do it until you watch this. I'm gonna share the five common mistakes that I see so that you know what to avoid. Or if you've ever had a lob in the past that you didn't like, it's likely because of one of these or multiple of these mistakes. Now here's the best part. This is a whole series, a three-part series that I'm gonna do about lobs. Because what I found is people approach lobs in the same way they approach a bob. And if you don't know, a lob is just a long bob. So it's easy to think that you would just go about it the same way, but there are some differences, some nuances that you have to pay attention to. So in this three-part series, the first video is going to be about the mistakes, the common things that you need to know about so that you can avoid them. The second video, I'm actually gonna walk you through a haircut and I'm gonna show you how I avoid these common mistakes in the salon so that you have a better understanding if you're gonna do a bob on yourself at home or you have a better understanding of how to communicate with your stylist about what you don't want. Then in the third video of this series, I'm gonna walk you through some styling techniques, some little tricks, some tips, some secrets so that you have a better idea of how to actually style that fancy lob. Now, if you know me, you know that I'm not gonna sit here in my studio with this light while I talk to you about lobs. I'm gonna take you somewhere. So we're going on an adventure. Question is, where are we gonna go? Well. So, my wife and I have you out in Mount Hood. Uh, where are we again? I think it's White River Snow Park. Okay, so if you want to know, we're in White River Snow Park. I think that's where it's at. Okay. <laughs> but either way, let's jump into five mistakes that you need to pay attention to. The first mistake that happens that I see all the time when it comes to lob shapes is not paying attention to the actual length. Lobs are, like I said, long bobs. And what that means is they're supposed to look like an actual bob. But if you don't take into consideration how long that length is, around the shoulders. If you leave it too long, it's likely to flip out there and it really takes away the overall appearance of it being a longer bob shape. So paying attention to how short you have to have it, not want it, but have to have it to get off your shoulders so that it does have time to grow, right? Just think that you don't want it to look great when you leave the salon or when you do it at home and then find out that a week later it's too long and it's flipping out. So you need to pay attention to how long you need to have it so that it actually can stay into a bob shape. And that'll lead us into our next tip, which is going to make a little bit more sense now that you understand that length is a big part of it. So don't make the mistake of not paying attention to how long it needs to be or how short it needs to be. Okay, should we feed more birds? Oh, I was doing it when you are <laughs> You guys probably weren't even paying attention to me. You're probably just paying attention to her feeding birds. Oh my gosh. On to the next tip. I'm a boss. Oh man, look at that view. That does not, as I say, does not suck. Wow. But I got a better one even up this way just a little bit that I want to get to that you're going to freak out about. But before that, I wanted to jump into my next two mistakes, I guess, not tips, mistakes. And the first one is the neckline and how long your neck is. If you have a shorter neck, it's going to be much harder, like we talked about, to get that length up off of those traps before it wants to flip out. So inevitably, you're gonna end up with a little bit shorter of a lob than a longer lob. You don't wanna look at the front and decide, well, this is how long I want it to be, and then find out that that doesn't really give you the length on the sides that you want, and all of a sudden you run into problems. Now the next part of that would be the neckline. Even if you have a longer neck, but you have a much lower neckline, you wanna pay attention to that because you're gonna have to leave the back long enough to cover that neckline. Now there is a little bit that you could shave if you absolutely have to, but just pay attention to how low your neckline is and how short or long your neck is. The next biggest mistake, mistake number three, would be over layering the sides. So here's the thing, just like any bob shape, a lob can do that massive triangular shape if you leave it one length. So you wanna pay attention to taking some of the bulk out of the sides, but you wanna also pay attention to how much you layer the sides all the 
time I see bob shapes that are too layered here and it ends up creating this little hiccup over the ears. And it takes away that strong line that ultimately creates the overall bob shape. And that is definitely something that we will go over in the next video. I will show you how I make sure that I don't overlayer the sides so that you understand better how to avoid that. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and head up this trail here and see if I can't find you the most ridiculous view you've ever seen. Probably. All right, let's get going. Oh, and by the way, if you're new here, welcome. Uh, my name is Justin Hickox. I take you on adventures and talk to you about hair, teach you about hair, teach you how to do your hair at home, teach you how to communicate with your stylist better, all that good stuff. So uh, if that kind of stuff is important to you, you might want to hit that subscribe button every Tuesday, at least bring out a brand new video. Otherwise, let's get back to the boss, 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 baby, I'm a boss, boss. It was worth it, right? Did I not say that that would be ridiculous? Look at that. That, my friends, is Mount Hood. Absolutely beautiful. And I can't wait. I'm still going to film that video where I actually walk through the behind the scenes of how I film these videos. I'm waiting because I want to take you to a very special spot that actually has Mount Hood involved in it. So, uh, yeah, you'll see more of this. But nonetheless, this is the perfect backdrop for my last two tips. And they are very important ones, so we definitely don't want to miss them. Okay, so the fourth mistake I see is layering the nape or the back too much. People approach lobs the same way they approach bobs. And they actually, even though they're similar, and it's like I said, a lob is just a longer version of a bob, they aren't the same thing. What happens is the farther you get from your neckline, meaning the longer your hair gets from the actual hairline in your back, your neck hairline, the less it can support certain kinds of layering or overlayering or bebbling, graduation, that kind of stuff. And so what happens is when typically when you cut a bob, you cut it very close to the neckline and you can take a lot of bulk out of the nape and leave a very nice bevel to it. And it grows out fine, it looks fine, and that length supports those layers, no problem. But like I said before, because we wanna pay attention to having that bob shape a little bit longer, that to create the lob, that length is farther from the neckline. If you layer that the same way you would a bob, it could be overlayered and it could tend to look very thin at the bottom. Even if it doesn't look thin at the bottom, the potential would be that as it grows, it will start to look thin. So just understand that the longer you leave that length from the actual neckline, the less it supports those kinds of layers. Now again, in the next video, in video two of this series, I will show you how I avoid that and how you can avoid that at home or how you can explain to your stylist how to avoid that. But do understand that that is a big mistake that I see, but it is easy to address. Now the next thing, mistake number five, is creating the angle at the wrong point, or I should say starting the angle at the wrong point. Most lobs or bobs have somewhat of an angle that comes forward. Realistically, one of the best ways that you can cut a bob is to have that angle follow your jawline. And the reason that's important is because if it follows the jawline, it'll bring the eye up. Your face isn't parallel to the floor. None of the angles are. Your jaw is not parallel to the floor. Your cheek structure isn't parallel to the floor. It all lifts up. So when you follow that line with a bob, it's very complimentary and it lifts the eye up instead of bringing that focus down. Many times if you leave a bob very straight, it can actually look like it's kind of hanging longer in the back because of the lines in your face and end up looking like it's dragging down, dragging your eye down. So you do want to have an angle, but what will happen is if you start that angle in the very back of your neck, what you'll find is it looks like a V in the back. Is you actually start the angle right at the ear. And when you do that, that keeps the back looking nice and strong. And then it gives you this nice angle that comes forward. But this is what's really important about that. You want to pay attention to the fact that if you're going to start that right at the behind the ear, it means that if you angle it too much or try to leave it too long in the front, it can kind of look like these dog ears that hang down. So you want to have that follow your jawline because it's a nicer flow. It won't look like it just drops off. It'll have a nice straight line and still be very complimentary. So what I need you to do right now is watch one of these two videos. My wife and I are gonna hang out with Kevin. Can you say hi? Can you come up? Say hi, hi Dad, oh my God. <laughs> We're gonna go hang out with Kevin, explore a little bit more snow, and I will see you in the next video. Oh, and make sure you hit subscribe, all that stuff. Okay, we'll see you guys soon, bye. Come on, Kevin, let's go. Oh, buddy, buddy, buddy.